Hello everyone, I'm WFXR Sports Director Jermaine Farrell. Welcome to the WFXR Sports Sit Down on WFXRTV.com. Each Tuesday and Friday, I will have a special sit down, one on one interview with a person in the world of sports. It is our commitment to bring you a special look at these people and share their stories with you on WFXRTV.com. Again, thank you so much for logging on to WFXRTV.com for the latest edition of the WFXR Sports Sit Down. Enjoy. All right, folks, Jermaine Farrell again with another edition of the WFXR Sports Sit Down on WFXRTV.com. And I'm joined with one of the legends in broadcasting, has been doing it in this area since the 70s. So we're going north of 50 years. He's going to get me for 45 saying. 45 years ago, Jermaine, come on. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Shows you how old I am, and you can see it in this picture. There you go, when, when Star Wars was actually in the theater. So. <laughs> but a, a man that I've, I've grown and I've had so much respect for, he's covered so many high school athletes and college athletes and, and still doing it to this day. And uh, he's done so much for us. Uh, WFXR, RCW, uh, a legend, Dave Ross, legendary sportscaster. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. And you know what, Jermaine? This is going to be the first time I've ever had to do high school basketball before I do high school football. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, well, we'll talk about that in, in just a moment. But first of all, um, you're a member of the Roanoke Valley Sports Club. I still need to become a member of the Roanoke Valley Sports Club. I know. You really do. Uh, I gotta yeah, I'm the president of it. They're trying to impeach me, but I'm still the president of it. And um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a great group. And we're looking forward to the uh, 17th of August, a Monday. You mentioned that Marty Smith is coming uh, to speak to the Roanoke Valley Sports Club on the 17th. First of all, talk about how all that came about and just talk about just the fact you're getting such a, a big time person from our backyard. Well, I'll tell you how it came about. And a lot of the credit goes to um, Steve Myers, one of the members of our club who was friends with a gentleman by the name of Jody Steger, who happened to be a roommate of Marty Smith. And Marty comes and visits him quite often. So Steve said, hey, we'd love to get him here at the, you know, sports club. And, of course, it's been difficult because, as you know, with him being involved in ESPN, it's hard to find a time when he can do it. But we were able to get this, and so he's, he's coming on the 17th, and uh, we're really thrilled to get him because we need to get more members, especially members that are younger, because, uh, well, you've been there quite a bit, Jermaine, <laughs> uh, we don't have what you call a young club, but we do have a lot of great members. And, and, and I think it's a way to let other people know about our club and some of the things we do. So if anyone's interested, what, what would they have to do to, uh, you know, get tickets or even become a member of the Roanoke Valley Sports Club? Because I, I'm understanding it's not going to be in our usual spot. It's going to be down in the arena area. Yes, I believe that's what it is because we're expecting, you know, a, a really good crowd. And what they've done is, and they did this for our last meeting, which had the uh, uh, five foot high school football coaches, they set it up so you would have four at each table, not where you'd have eight or something like that. Only four could be at each table. Uh, and, of course, want you to uh, wear a mask. And... Um, then it, it's a buffet type style, but they have that, they had that plexiglass up between and you just, they'd serve you from, from there. So um, that's, that's, that's how this thing is going to go. And um, to get in touch, all you got to do is uh, go to uh, Roanoke Valley sports uh, club.com Roanoke Valley sports club.com. And that, gets you to our website and that has information about what you can do. In fact, I think, you know, you can even pay on online there. That's pretty cool. Now let's talk about a subject that's near and dear to your heart, high school sports. I mean, this has been a year unlike any other, like you mentioned earlier, you're going to be doing high school basketball games before high school football games. Uh, from your perspective, and you've been doing this for a minute, I keep saying that, which you're probably going to slug me when you see me, but that's okay. I, I can take it because you're the man. But um, just talk about this aspect of it, because I'm sure this has to be 
such a tough time for everyone involved. Yeah, it really is. And I, and I hate it, especially for, you know, the student athletes, because you're going to have basketball, but again, it's going to be a reduced season and uh, you have all these things like this going on football being played in the spring. I mean, it just is so much different. And of course you see some uh, young people that are going to go and, you know, straight on to the college or because we're so close to states like uh, Tennessee and West Virginia, you know, you got some kids going to, to high schools there so that they could, cause they're planning on playing in the fall. <clears throat> Good deal. And I, I got to ask you this, like I said, you, you've been doing this, you know, take me back to your love for sports. Where did that come from growing up? Cause you're, you're from, if I'm not mistaken, you're from either, hang on, I'm trying to remember, it's either Pennsylvania or upstate New York. Am I right or wrong or on either of those? Or is it Greg Roberts would say, am I hovering the mark? <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you are right. I came from Western Pennsylvania and I did work in upstate New York before I came to, um, to Roanoke. But yeah, I, I was born in Butler, Pennsylvania. My dad was a minister, went to Darby, PA, which was on the eastern part of the state, and then on to Uniontown, where I graduated from high school. So even though I went to Darby for a few years, which is in the eastern part of the state, I kept my allegiances to Pittsburgh. There you go. And you are a big time Pittsburgh Pirates and Pittsburgh Steelers. And don't forget the Penguins. That's true. Can't forget about the Penguins. <laughs> And also the fish that saved Pittsburgh. Remember that basket? They had a basketball team there. The fish that saved Pittsburgh. Yeah, actually, they had one way back when. Uh, in fact, the Connie Hawkins. <laughs> you ever remember the name Connie Hawkins? Yes, I do. Player. He played for the, the name of the team, believe it or not, I think was the Pittsburgh Condors. But the NBA never made it. I, I you know, whereas, you know, those other sports have done pretty well. Uh, attendance wise and all the condors just never did it okay yeah T talk a little bit about um coming to rono because you came here if i'm not mistaken it was 75 you Correct. became you came as became the sports director at wsls talk about yes. just getting here and how did all that come about okay the way that came about is um i went to college in ohio at bowling green state university and got involved they had a public broadcasting station there in TV and also, of course, a campus radio station. So I was able to do things with them uh, there. And then when I graduated, I had gone through ROTC. So I had uh, two years of active duty in the Army. And my first uh, assignment was at a place called Toby Hanna Army Depot in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. And I was the information officer there. And so I would have to do reports on, you know, like you say, well, Toby Army Depot has just gotten a $50,000 contract, that kind of thing. And it was sent to a number of radio stations. Well, one of the stations was a radio TV station combined in Scranton. And the program director uh, wrote me and said, would you be interested in doing sports on the weekend? And I thought, wow, this would be great. So he said, come down here, do an audition. If we like you, we'll hire you. So I went down there and I did the, uh, I did the audition. They liked it. And so I did sports on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. And in between, I had to do DJ work as a country music station there that, at, at, at Scranton. And then from there, I spent a year in Vietnam. And when I came back from Vietnam, I uh, got a job as sports director at WUTR-TV in Utica, New York. And then from there, I've, I, I came to uh, growing up. Talk about your time at WSLS, because I remember growing up watching you. Um, I always mention this all, your, your outfits were unique. The sets were unique. <laughs> For a time, I mean, back then, obviously, it was, it was high technology. But it just seemed like you were having a lot of fun back there being a sports a director of the sports team. Oh yeah, I had I had a very good time, and I had many many friends that uh, still have. In fact, Marshall Moore, who was one of the anchor men, he's he's in this area now. Ted Stone is in this area. Also worked with him. Gene Cap. I mean, I had very good anchor people and weather uh, weather folks, and so I really enjoyed it. 
and I was able to do, as I say, that six and 11 o'clock sports. And we even did, believe it or not, two uh, live telecasts of Roanoke College basketball. That's back when they were Division II, did it over at the Roanoke Civic Center when they played uh, Old Dominion at that time, which was Division II, led by Wilson Washington, who played in the NBA, and also Baltimore University. So I got a chance to do a lot of different things, did a VMI basketball show and so on and so forth. So I'm very fortunate and ha had a good time there. Had uh, spent uh, seven years till 82. And then afterwards, uh, you, you kind of made the transition to, uh, well, you, I wouldn't say you made the transition because you were doing it anyway, but you started doing, you know, radio play-by-play -play broadcast. And also during that time frame, you, you started up what we're doing now here at WFXR, which is WJPR when they were at the time, you started high school football games, broadcasting high school football games on the air, which to my knowledge, I mean, I think you started what, 85 or 86 with it? 86, it 1986 I started. At WJPR, which is now us 21, channel 21 and channel 27, WJPR, which is now WWCW, and of course WFXR, the merger. But talk to talk to everybody about how that got started. How how did you get that going? Because it's a it's a tradition that's been going on since '86. Well, the way that got started was there was an article in the newspaper, and uh, Lon Morelli, who I think was the sales manager, general manager at uh, JPR back then, had said how he wanted to do, you know, games high school and so forth. So I contacted him and I said, you know, in Utica, believe it or not, even way back then, we did some games on tape delay. And so I said, I, I'd love to do it. So he, he liked the idea. I got hired there doing not just sports, but, but sales. And so we started in 1986 and we went all the way to the state championship game, which was uh, Salem and Hampton down in, uh, in Hampton where we, we did the uh, state championship and that was our first year. And then I've, I've continued with uh, Fox and all until um, they didn't have time or whatever for it. And then I did it with DRL and then uh, now with uh, WWCW. Was there a, uh, and you've been in unique situations. I've seen you broadcast a game outside <laughs> the press box because those high school <laughs> press boxes aren't that big. I, I, I've never really asked you this. How tough, obviously you'd love to be in a press box. Like when old Victory Stadium, the press box was big enough so you could do a game in there or, or Salem Stadium yeah. or, uh, or City Stadium in Lynchburg. But then there are other facilities where they're just not big enough. How tough, how tough is it to, to do a game? outside well as far as the you know the only bad thing is maybe weather but other than that it's not that bad i have a little tea table that i take which has my charts on it and that type thing and um it's one of those deals where you we have fortunately so many radio stations that do high school games and normally they're in the press box because either they do it all the time or they're the visiting team for whatever school I'm, I'm doing it at. So I've just gotten used to it. It should be fun doing that in March. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be some interesting stuff. That's going to be interesting stuff. Hey, hey, Dave, should I even ask this question? I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, how old are you? Let everybody know how old you are, because I mean, still be doing this as long as you have been. It's just impressive. I'm. Uh, let's see. I'm th 72. It's funny because I, I was just talking with Coach Beal. He's 68. So there it is. That, that's the closest. Oh my so. gosh! I hate. Do, do you believe this? And if you see me now, you know you can tell I'm, <laughs> I'm over 70. But uh, <laughs> at some time, I guess I got to give this up, buddy. <laughs> Well, I, I guess that's another question because, I mean, if, if we take it back to the 70s, I mean, you got the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, and now we're getting ready to 2002. So you're going on your sixth decade of doing broadcast. Yes, and actually, if you count when I worked, uh, you know, I worked summers at the, at the 
radio station in uh, my hometown of Uniontown. And that would have been, you know, 68, 69. <laughs> so if you count that, I've already got over 50 years. Yeah. So if we count the 60s, so you, you, you've you done broadcast in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010s. Now we're in the, we're hitting 2020. So you're going into your seventh decade of broadcast. <laughs> a span of over seven decades. <laughs> I mean, do, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you sit back and you think to yourself saying, wow, I started off in the 60s in Pennsylvania or Utica, New York, or wherever that was, and now yeah, was I'm in Roanoke, Virginia, and I'm still doing it. Yeah, it was in, it was in Pennsylvania, and then, like I say, I was able to do stuff on the, uh, at Bowling Green on the campus radio and the public broadcasting station there, and as I say, that was in the late 60s, 68, 69, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a long time, but I've been very fortunate because a lot of times it's it's being at the right place at the right time rather than uh, you know being all that great. I've I've been able to go, and fortunately because I've been at stations, they've enabled me to do like half hour shows, do the play by play, do things like that. So it's it's been it's it's really been enjoyable. I'm 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 very blessed to have to have had this opportunity and you've had tremendous support especially from your family and your wife god rest her soul just talk about how impactful your family has been during this journey of your broadcasting career well uh, you mentioned my wife and god bless her soul but she was great because you know i mean i'd have to be, she'd never go anywhere on friday nights because of uh, doing football or basketball or whatever sometimes saturdays with college football and all she was a teacher for many years and did a phenomenal job and my daughter you know she was growing up a lot of times i might have to miss some of her things but fortunately for the most part i've been able to have a a, a good uh family life and uh my parents were great they they always supported me. And I think family is so important. I'm, I've been blessed to have two of the best parents I could ever ask for, a wonderful wife and, and daughter and son-in-law and two grandchildren. So it's been very, it's been very good for me, very good. Now I notice there is one issue in your family, the fact you're a Pirates fan, but your, uh, your, your son-in-law yeah. and them, they're Cubs fans. So how, do you, how do you handle that family issue there? Uh, well, he, of course, <laughs> he likes to rub it in, especially nowadays with the way the pirates are. And, uh, he wants to get Cubs things for his kids, but don't you worry. I've gotten Steelers and Penguins stuff to my grandson say, Hey, don't you think you got to be a Cub fan, buddy? <laughs> William, you can be a pirate fan, but it's going to be tough because he's going to have it seven days a week. I might only get him a few days a week. Yeah. Another thing I want to let everybody know, and we, we've done a story on it. I mean, you're a Hall of Famer. So you're in the Virginia High School League Hall of Fame for your excellence in broadcast. Well, for lifetime achievement. Well, so but, yeah, it's, but that's still deserved. Just talk about that honor because it's well deserved. Well, I guess it shows I've been around for so long and uh, really, you know, I never even thought about it, but I give credit to uh, Bill Turner and Ed Green and uh, John Montgomery and Chuck Pound, the AD at, at Lord Botetot. They're ones that started that thing uh, without really my knowledge at first and put me in for it. And I eventually, you know, received that Lifetime Achievement Award a couple years back in uh, in. Richmond. I guess the biggest question, I think we kind of touched on it. Uh, it. It was funny because, you know, growing up as a kid watching you at WSLS and you weren't there anymore. And then I was wondering, well, whatever happened to him? And then I, I hear you on the radio. I, I remember, <laughs> this is funny. I remember hearing you do a game on WTOY. It was a William Fleming game on the radio on WTOY, old 9, 10 a.m. <laughs> Yes. Yep. I remember yep. hearing you 
And <laughs> and it was it was I think and and you know Mike Morgan who's still working in radio over at uh, WFI. Yeah, he's over he's there. over there. Well, and, believe it or not, yeah, he and, is. And and the reason why I heard, I said, wait a minute, that's Mike Morgan, his voice. I remember him with T.O.Y. And he said, you remember T.O.Y.? I said, I grew up, I listened to W.T.O.Y. But, um, and and then, you know, hearing you, and then, you know, finally seeing you do the games with J.P.R. I said, well, there he is. Oh, yeah, Dave Ross. I grew up watching him. And it was, and I was still, you know, 12, 13 years old in the 80s. But it was just so neat to see you back doing it and, and then to link up with you and, you know, I have, and I'm, I i know we joking kid, but sincerely, I mean, you're one of the guys that maybe want to get into business with what I'm doing today, because there's so much respect. There's so many of you, like you and the Roy Stanleys of the world, the Dennis Carters, the, the Greg Roberts, the Mike Stevens, yeah. uh, the John Oregons, the, um, the Jim Carrolls. I mean, That's there's right. so many of you that made me want to get into the business and, it's just such an honor when I can just call you up and say, well, I got Dave Ross on my phone. And it's, it's an honor. I mean, to me, you're kind of like, you know, people talk about the Ben Scullys and the Harry Carries and all those. But, you know, to me, in my world, my circle, I look at you like that. Well, you know something, Jermaine, you talk about those T.O.Y. Actually, a couple of years before that, I was working at WSLC SLQ Radio. Mm -hmm. And I did uh, Virginia Tech helped out Virginia Tech basketball. Mm -hmm. And the guy who worked with me was another one of the uh, guys who was tremendously well-known in history in this area. His name was Jerry Joins. And Jerry Joins and Jim Carroll were like the guys back in the 60s, 70s, and so forth. So I've, um, I've been very fortunate, like I say, to get to do a lot of things. And when I was doing those Tech games, uh, believe it or not, Paige Moyer <laughs> was a player on that team. <laughs> and Charlie was a coach. Something else. Speaking of uh, Virginia Tech, you got to share. I know the story. You got to share the, the Henson Heave story because everybody and their mama wanted your video. <laughs> you got to tell that life. story. The, the Henson yeah. Heave story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to tell was, that one. That was one of those, again, being lucky at the right time. That was when I was doing the sports on Channel 10 and we carried. That was back when they were in the Metro Conference and they were playing Florida State, down at Florida State. Tech was, was playing and it was a game going back and forth, uh, went into overtime. And when the Florida State had a free throw, which could have gotten them the win because there would have been basically no time left. But the guy missed it. it it came off of the rim and into the hands of Les Henson, and he threw it the length of the court, swished it. Now, that's back when it was only two points, but that was enough, and so they won something like 78-77. So I was so fortunate because I told the engineer, hey, this is a good game. Let's just tape the, tape the last few minutes, and thank goodness I did that because I had that footage from the Metro Conference Network, and then – I got calls from all over the place and I actually got it on one of those, you know, NBC feeds that you could get from your local stations there where they had that shot and I was able to narrate it. And I heard from all kinds of people who, <laughs> you know, went to high school and stuff with me because they had heard my voice on there. Wow. And that's something. I mean, I think, you know, I looked up the video and it was like swish. It yeah, it was. It was unbelievable. It was. Uh, that was it. And listen, back then, Tech had some good basketball. You know, they had guys like Les Henson. They had, uh, you know, uh, Marshall Ashford, who was an assistant coach at, at Fleming, uh, Dale Solomon. That, they had good, good ball clubs. And back then, I believe only 48 teams got into the NCAA tournament at that time. I think so. You're right. And didn't have the 60. You don't have the 68 that they have now. But. Well, shoot, back when I went to college, it was – I don't know, 24 or 32, it wasn't many. Because you didn't have, you know, it was one one thing. You either won your league or forget it. You weren't going. I, I got to ask you this. Uh, what are you going to do on your Friday nights this fall? <laughs> I ask Good everybody question. That. Good question. I don't know exactly, but uh, I'll find something to do. Well, if you have college football, there'll probably be some games on college football I can watch. There you go. But Dave Ross, again, I appreciate you giving me this time, and you've you've been such a blessing 
to to me and so many others. And you know, it's going to be fun. I mean, obviously, we'll you you broadcast the games for us on WWCW. There'll be basketball and then football, which we'll all be out there shivering together. Sure. Oh, we will. Hey, and one other thing, Jermaine, what, since you brought that up, I do want to give uh, kudos to the young people that do those games with me. These are, I mean, I, I'm amazed at the quality that they do. I really am. I mean, it's first class. Yeah, Frank, the kids yeah, from Franklin, Franklin County. Yeah, Franklin County High School students, they put together the broadcast, and they've been doing it for nearly a decade, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're, they're good. They're Probably very around good. around that. So, anyway, oh, but that's what, words, what words of wisdom do you get? Nothing. I said, you know, I like to kid around with them. And, I, and the other thing, they're just wonderful young people because they're, they're uh, respectful. They work hard. You can tell them something. And uh, a lot of those kids are now, for instance, Bell Dickerson, who works over at the uh, uh, Wheeler Station. She's, she's over there now, and she worked on this uh, – thing and and there have been others who have gone on in fact uh, one of the guys there works back in your control room worked with us at uh, on, on those uh, telecasts back in the day so it's 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 I just tell them look do the very best you can take uh, your you know criticism constructively uh, Ken Kalinske who's their teacher he does a great job with them and uh, you know I like to see him do well because, uh, like I say, they're wonderful, wonderful young people. I mean, uh, I have nothing but respect for them. They all are, are good and, and professional. You know, it's, what'll be neat, you know, and <laughs> I think I've mentioned this to you before, uh, when you talk about as long as you've been doing the games, I mean, there could be two, maybe three generations that you probably <laughs> have Maybe close to four. I won't say four. That's a stretch, but three. Come on. <laughs> what the heck are you trying to do? You want me to be Vin Scully, okay? There Get you me. go. Hey. <laughs> no, but they I'll were tell the you Brooklyn what. Dodgers. Well, I, I get to thinking about it. If you count like football and basketball that I've done, I did the state wrestling uh, championships for many years and all that. I've probably done counting Utica and these other places a thousand. I'm probably up around a thousand <laughs> telecasts or broadcasts, not telecasts, because also with radio. I mean, because <laughs> you I mean, figure you think, that many years. Well, if you if you do the average, if you figure you you probably in football you're you're going to do probably let's say a minimum of ten football games a year, unless there's a playoff. And in basketball, I mean, you'll probably do probably what eight to ten basketball games yeah, a year. Yeah, ten, ten, and then with playoffs, yeah. Probably again, you're in that 12, 13 range. Right. So, and so let's eight. say, so let's just say 25. You probably do 25 games a year. You multiply that by how many years? You, you got a lot there. Yeah, 25. You figure, and then you go by uh, what did he say? 80, 30 some years. So you're talking six, seven hundred there. Yeah. And in that time, I also did because uh, we've televised ODAC football and basketball games. Mm -hmm. I did Roanoke College basketball on radio for a while. Like I say, those tech radio uh, broadcasts and the state wrestling championships. And, uh, you know, you start throwing in all that stuff. And, <laughs> yeah, you figure 35 times about 30. <laughs> I mean, hey, let's, that's let's, a hey, lot. You know what? Since I got, let, let me pull up, I pull up my phone. We're going to do a quick calculator while we have a couple of seconds here. I'm going to, I just want to just look at that. So let's do a calculator, pull this up on my phone. Technology is great because you have your phone. You can just, you know, pull I up know. stuff on your phone. And you can do calculators. So let's, uh, let's pull that up. Hold on a second. Yeah, you you gotta see, love I, did, it. I did Ferrum football too for a couple of years on radio, uh, their home game. So <laughs> yeah, that to it. Oh, Goodness man. gracious. That is great. <laughs> All right. So let me, you know, calculator, online calculator. Okay. All right. So you said, you said 30, you said 35 games a year. Or did I say 30? An average, yeah. Again, right. some would be less, some would be right. more. So let's yeah, say 35. So you're saying 35 times 30? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 35 times 30. You're looking at 1,050. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, over. So a that's why I'm years. saying a thousand. If you chop off even fifty, yeah. it'd be around a thousand. Yeah, I'd say a thousand. That, that's still that's still impressive. <laughs> yeah, it shows you how long I've been around. But there you go. Uh, fortunately, I've been able to keep doing it, and I guess people think I've done them well enough that they kept me on the air. So I'm appreciative of that. Yeah. And I do want to say one other thing, Jermaine, and I mean yes, this sir. seriously. Mm -hmm. And this isn't like kiss up time, but right. I want you to know. Uh, I'm very impressed, and I know uh, people I talk to are with the job you do. You do a, a very outstanding job of covering local sports, and I think that's what's important because, you, you know, you can get national sports a lot of times, but local sports is so important. Well, I appreciate that. You know, since we've been doing this here since 2015, we've had a lot of great people and a, a great team. Uh, the current team we got with myself, David DeGuzman, and Ryan Moy, I mean, we are just, I mean, with COVID going on, it, 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 your degree of difficulty goes up, but they have really answered the bell and we wouldn't do it unless we all work together. So we have a great team and, you know, we, we got a lot of good people in this market. So it, it's been fun. And, and like I said, I, like I said, I, I respect the heck out of you. And one final question before I let you go. Um, and I've, I asked this to Coach Beal, <laughs> so I'll ask you the same thing. How long do you see yourself doing this? Well, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to do it at least maybe a couple more years. And then, you know, I've got to start thinking about hanging it up just because, you know, it's, you just can't, you shouldn't just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. So, um, and let other people get involved, but uh, I'd like to go at least a couple more years. <clears throat> well, there you go. Well, I want you to keep doing it until you, you feel like it's time. And then, once it's time, you know, we got to celebrate it. Got to celebrate your career once you wrap it up. Yeah. Well, then you can have, you could always have a uh, segment on your sports called the old folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you could have me on there. <laughs> well, Dave Ross, it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being on the WFXR Sports Sit Down on WFXR. TV.com and we'll be looking for you uh, coming up in the winter and the spring for football on WW and basketball on WWCW. Yep. And I thank those people. They've been great. Uh, Erica Zink and, and uh, the, the other staff there, uh, Ms. Morgan, they're, they're good people. Good people. But well, Dave, you take care, sir. Thanks so much. All right. You too, buddy. And thank you so much for checking out this edition of the WFXR Sports Sit Down on WFXRTV.com. For all the latest news, weather, and sports, there's only one place to go. That's WFXRTV.com. Also, download the WFXR News app. More good stuff. We are here to hook you up with the good stuff on WFXR. Again, thank you so much for watching the latest edition of the WFXR Sports Sit Down on WFXRTV.com. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hope all of your teams are winners. Have a wonderful and blessed day, everybody.